welcome to AIDO Network International Business and Investment Forum 2020. In this segment, His Highness, His Excellency, Paul Eganda, the president of AIDO Network International, will give us an overview of the mandate, board of governors, committee, and many more about AIDO Network International, hosted by our glamorous Princess Shepi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, your highnesses, your majesties, excellencies, to this wonderful day, this wonderful afternoon. This is IDO Network, and this is our Business and Investment Summit. Thank you for being here. We are going to kickstart our program. It's going to be an exciting afternoon. I would like each and every one of us to be attentive, to learn as much as we can, participate. But I would like to say that we are going to have a lineup of panelists that are going to address different topics. And all participants, every question that you'd like to ask, you can put it in the question and answer uh, chat line where there is a provision and it's going to be taken care of. For now, though, ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome on stage to give us more about who we are as IDO Network and to tell us about the purpose of today. His Highness Paul Iganda, who is also the founder and the president of IDO Network. Shall we usher him on the stage? Sir, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Princess Seppi. Uh, it gives me a pleasure to welcome all of you here today. This is a very exciting day for IDO, for, for our first business and investment forum. Your Excellency, the Uganda High Commissioner to the UK, Ambassador Julius Moto, Your Royal Highness, Papa Sande Emolot, Your Royal Majesty, King Taki, Keiko of the Ga Kingdom, Your Majesty King Gozevo III of South Africa, Your Royal Highness King Diami of the Congo, all government representatives from Ghana, Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, Cameroon, Togo, the advisory board of IDO and the governance board, Chairperson Dr. Sheikh and Mrs. Urike, our delegation from SCCA, led by the Chairperson Sinciata, all excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, I take this opportunity to welcome you again. Uh, what is IDO? In short, is an organization that uses culture to promote unity, development, and social change. Next. Our objectives are clear. We promote culture we create opportunity for business and investments. We are the voice of the voiceless. We are advocate for human rights. We lobby for support. We and we undertake projects that support our our communities, mainly through our kingdoms and cultural leaders. Next, yes, IDO is structured in a way that. We are a strong team of about 45 people overseen by the board of directors, which is headed by the president. We do the governance and the board of directors is takes advice from the next board, which is the advisory and arbitration board headed by Mrs. Ulrika Polman. Our committees and directors are the implementers of the decisions and the programs that the governance sets. In short, this is how IDO is structured. IDO 
as you can see in the organogram at the board is the decision making up there we've got the advisory board we've got the business and investment committee the one that has brought us here today which we call the IDO International Business Committee. This is the one that oversees the projects and the business arm of IDO. We've got the membership and fundraising committee. IDO has got nearly about 2 million subscribers worldwide. We have the direct threats. We are more of a culture leading organization. So culture is very powerful in whatever IDO does. That's one of the reasons why we've got a big following of cultural leaders, kings, queens, and princesses. Our youth is also a very powerful wing. We empower our youth to take over from us, and we learn a lot from them. So we don't work alone, as you can see in the organogram. We get a lot of support from our chapters. These chapters are countries headed by the country directors. In our network now, we've got a very strong following from Cameroon, I do Kenya, I do Germany, I do Ghana, I do South Africa, Togo, and Uganda. Yes, so this is how we work. As we said, our strength is in partnerships, our strength is in networks. We know that we can't be, we can't move alone. I know in every way it's powered by the relationship with our networks. We depend on the power of volunteering to make the change that we would like to see. So as I've already said, local, national, international is where our support comes from. So we thank our chapters for this. These are the boards of directors of IDO, as you can see. That is the team that does the governance of IDO at the top level. I thank all of them. I thank all this team. So when you talk of IDO, do not look at the president. Look at the team that you see in front of you. This team has got all experts from different walks of life, each of them specializing in different uh, areas. We are blessed to have a very, very strong experienced team of advisors and arbitration. We've got a legal team, experts in human rights. Uh, we've got lawyers, we've got businessmen. Uh, our chairperson, Mrs. Urika, as you can see her, Ambassador Namboka, uh, I think he's got a wrong name, but he, <laughs> So, so this is our team in brief. All these people are here to show us direction. Then the board that has brought us here today, which is the IBC. This board is headed by the lady at the top, Linda Saberera, she's the chairperson of this board, uh, assisted by Dr. Samson. All these guys are experts in their areas, in their fields. So just that when you meet them after this summit, you know who is who. So thank you very much. The IBC was established in October 2020. The primary function of the IDO Business Committee is to develop and deliver IDO's business and investment strategy. That is including growing IDO's own investment portfolio. We are an NGO and we entirely depend on sponsorship. On this, we thought that after the restructuring, I know was able to come up with a strategy to diversify its income to support the charitable arm. So the IBC entirely deals with all the business aspects of IDO, while IDO still remains a culturally leaning organization, working with the community groups, cultural leaders, to do the charity work that they do very well. More about this organization, you can find us on IDO website. We are also on Instagram, we are in Twitter, we are in 
Facebook. So, to add on my voice, I would like to ask Her Highness Grace Eganda, who is my wife next to me, who is going to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Your Highness, Chairman and President, IDO Network International, Mr. Paul Eganda, Excellencies, Royal Highnesses, dignitaries, distinguished participants in your respective capacities, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols out. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be. And thank you all so much for being part of this timely business forum. To God all the glory for making it possible. Much appreciation to the IDOL leadership for creating this space and time. A time like this that opens us up to a whole new world of opportunities in business and investment through partnership. As IDOL, we value our partnerships because partnership is something that speaks to us as IDOers. We believe that when we partner, together we emerge stronger and we are able to realize our desired goals and outcomes. That is why this dialogue today is very important. Together, let us today explore our expectations as we prepare for a post-pandemic, progressive and prosperous Africa and the world at large. We cannot leave it to chance. You know, we cannot leave our future to chance. Let us explore our untapped potential and take advantage of the countless opportunities that Mother Africa presents. Let us work together towards the Africa that we all want. I believe that through honest and transparent partnerships, we can all grow together. As IDO, we believe in collective growth. That is why access to finance and financial inclusion is an issue that needs to be addressed, and we must address it. Uh, if I may, if I may, before I end, I would like to highlight the key role that our cultural institutions and kingdoms play in the business of doing business. We therefore should be very intentional in having them at the very forefront as we move forward in establishing our sustained and flourishing businesses. I believe we can all achieve well because we have the will to do so. So let us act on our vision. Let us position ourselves strategically with an expectation to change the usual African narrative. I'll end here wishing us all very fruitful and empowering deliberations. I thank you all. That was a brilliant speech by our First Lady, Her Highness Grace Eganda. We thank her for her advice. And yes, indeed, Africa is ready for prosperity and business. Watch out for the next segment by Ambassador Julius Peter Moto of Ugandan High Commission to the United Kingdom and Ireland. Thank you and be blessed.